hello. Thank you for joining me today as we compare two of Viking's popular cruises, the Danube Waltz and the Romantic Danube. I'm Carol Shaddix with Imagine Going Your Travel, and Viking is all we do. We love Viking cruises, travel on them ourselves, and of course, sharing our love and knowledge about Viking is something that we feel like helps our clients know how to choose the best vacation option for them. And what we're going to talk about today is how to choose the best option without having to search the internet, thumb through catalogs that change every month, or have to call a random person at an 800 number. We're here to help you. We don't charge any fee for our services. And of course, we want you to have an amazing vacation and do lots of Viking cruises in your future. So I'm going to turn off my camera so you will be able to see all the great images that I'll be showing. And we'll go into in depth what the schedule is for today. So we are going to compare the itineraries first side by side. We'll talk about the amazing bonuses that we're able to give you that you can't get anywhere else. And then if you've never done a Viking cruise before, we'll do a ship and stateroom tour as well. Now, Viking cruises are good for those who are interested in active, educational, culturally enriching experiences. They are also something to consider. They're not the perfect for those who are looking for lots of onboard entertainment. Viking will bring local talent on board. But usually what happens with us is we have um, done so much touring, so much walking during the day that we're happy to eat dinner, do something light entertainment, and then just uh, get a good night's sleep so we can start all of our exploring again the next day. The other thing, it's not the type of cruise that's good for those who like to sit and relax because we are usually sailing overnight in port during the day. So I like to say these are for those who like SEE days versus SEA days. We do have some great options with Viking Oceans. Our transatlantic cruises, for instance, are great for those that want to relax and enjoy great food, great entertainment, uh, lots of options on our ocean ships. The river ships are much more active. And of course, we want to make sure you're aware of that to start with. Now, who's this webinar not for? Viking Cruises is not great for those uh, with children under 18 because we have to have at least 18 to be on board the ship. Now, I will say it's a great multi-generational cruise. My girls are currently on Romantic Danube as I'm doing this webinar. They are 28 and 31. They're having an amazing time and they love art, history, culture, and geography. So this is the perfect cruise for them. So what a wonderful way to spend time together as a family. And this is a great option for you. One of the personal testimonies for my clients, and this is one I particularly love, is Julia said, this was one of the best vacations of our lives. And she and her husband have been married for 48 years, but she had never cruised before. And her husband really wanted to do so. So she went through a seminar, much like I'm doing for you now, decided to try it and really enjoyed it and ended up being able to do two cruises before her husband passed away. So she has these great memories and Viking did not disappoint. And I want you to have that same experience. So imagine this is your next vacation. This is really quintessential river cruising, beautiful day, things to see along both sides of the river. These amazing Viking ships, which have the patented Aquavit Terrace, as you can see here, uh, rocking chairs in the front. Imagine just scenic sailing, having um, some great opportunities for photos or doing breakfast here, or maybe watching the stars at night. Up here on the sun deck, you can have uh, walking tracks and great views, 360 degree views. And this is what river cruising is all about. Now, the two that we're going to talk about today are the Romantic Danube and the Danube Waltz. So the white dots means we overnight there. So you can go either direction on both of these cruises, Regensburg to Budapest or the reverse. And Danube Waltz starts in Passau to Budapest and overnights in both directions. So either direction is fine. I loved the Danube Waltz because the jumping off point from Linz was into the Czech Republic. And we got to see this amazing city called Chesky Kremlov there. Pass South or uh, Regensburg will allow you to extend your trip for three nights into Prague. I really recommend doing that. As you can see, it's not really close to any river. So doing it on this end is a wonderful extension. Now here's the day-by-day -day comparison. Romantic Danube is gonna overnight in Vienna, Budapest and Regensburg. Danube Waltz is gonna overnight in 
um, pass out in Budapest only, but you get Bratislava and Linz in there as well. So for our purposes, we're going to start our overview in Budapest, and we have this wonderful overview of this city, which is split in two by the Danube River, and you'll have some incredible views of part the Parliament building at night, which is just amazing. We have Castle Hill here, which is Fisherman's Bastion, and we have uh, the San Matthias Church, which you see here. The Fisherman's Bastion has some incredible views of the river. It's a wonderful place to walk, get some ice cream or have a bite of lunch. We'll also get a chance to see Great Market Hall, which is uh, about three stories high, built in the late 19th century. It's a wonderful place to go. And um, if it's hot, get out of the sun, rainy, get out of the rain, uh, cold, get out of the cold, and just get an, an incredible overview of these amazing fruits, vegetables, um, great place to buy Hungarian paprika. Uh, on the upper levels, you'll have the uh, street food there. You'll be able to try everything Hungarian. And of course, a lot of craft markets are there if you want to buy some Hungarian lace or hand-tooled leather, belts, purses, anything you can think of is on that level. And it's a wonderful way to kind of see the culture and uh, the things that are unique to Hungary. Millennium Memorial will be part of your included tour. So we'll arrive in Budapest. You'll have the day to get acclimated to the time change. Great way to kind of stay awake, get on local time, explore the city to the extent you can on your own that first day. Then you'll have dinner that night, wake up the next morning, you'll have your included tour, which will take you to both sides of the city. And Millennium Memorial is one of the things that you will get to see. And it commemorates the Magyar chieftains who actually founded the city. We'll also have a chance to see the shoes on the Danube, which is 60 pair of iron shoes that were uh, created to honor those who were shot into the Danube River by the Nazis. So very somber stop, but a, a well, um, well worth a visit and encourage you to do that. The Sejny Thermal Baths are built back in the 1800s and have some incredible healing properties through their mineral, mineral waters. You'll see the locals getting a chance to just relax and experience um, playing chess in the water and just re being restorative um, in the midst of all this incredible beauty. You can do this as an optional excursion with Viking. It's called the City of Healing Waters for a reason. So take your swimsuit and then Viking will make sure you are transported there. We also have an option that's very popular of the Hungarian cowboys, the, uh, the Pusta Horsemanship Show, which is very popular, especially if you love horsemanship, acrobatics. Uh, these cowboys wanted to preserve their way of living over the centuries, not only for um, developing the land agriculturally, but also being able to defend itself from invaders. And so these horses can actually lay down in the grass, do incredible things. And of course, that is a fun option that you can do here in Budapest. We've got some additional things that you'll be able to do. We'll do a traditional Hungarian dinner, for instance. And one thing about Viking is they're great food. You always have the steak, chicken, cedar salad, et cetera, traditional American classics on the left side of the menu. But on the right side, you'll be able to choose some amazing food that will be unique to the destination we're sailing in. And of course, if you have allergies, Viking's great about customizing to your needs. Then we're going to um, end our day here in Budapest where you have these beautiful overlooks that I encourage you to get out and explore. It's such an incredible city at night. So it's a great place to start your journey. Now we're going to go to Bratislava and this would be if you were doing a Danube walk. So we'll deviate a little bit from the romantic Danube itinerary. And Bratislava has a castle up on the top of the hill. We'll actually see this, um, this um, area that borders two different countries, Austria and Hungary. You'll get a concluded tour, which will take you up Freedom Square to the castle. Uh, we don't actually tour this castle, but you get some incredible views. Then your guide will walk you down to the old town. Now, if you need to modify your excursions, Viking always has the 
level of difficulty whenever you're choosing the excursion. So look at that if that's something you need to take into consideration for mobility issues. We did the tour from the top. So we got those great views and our guide walked us down the hill, told us so much fascinating history of Bratislava. They actually have um, St. Martin's Cathedral, which is the site of the Hungarian coronations for more than 250 years. And another really popular thing is the home hosted visits. And I mentioned this earlier in the local life options. You have local life, working world and privileged access. And our guests really love these home hosted visits. It's a way to just get in there and experience the uh, joy of learning about other cultures, learning about their traditions, their uh, what family life is like and how they um, uh, celebrate different holidays and et cetera. So it's just a fun way. Our guests really love the home hosted options and Bratislava is one of those that you can take advantage of there. Then we're gonna have our day in Vienna for both cruises. We have this incredible architecture that is just amazing. We have um, the, we'll dock a little bit away from the city. It's about four train stops away, uh, not really walkable. So you'll take a motor coach into the city the Ringstrasse was a road built around the, the site of the old city walls. So we'll do a coach, a motor coach tour into the city. Then we get there and do an actual walking tour, tour. But of course, so many amazing museums that you'll be able to see here. This is the uh, Rathaus or the city hall. And we have uh, the incredible state opera house, which is here. But we've got lots of things for you to do when you're here. You'll have the included tour which as I mentioned would be uh, circling the city and then getting into the main area, which is the Hofburg Palace, which you'll walk around there, learn a lot about the, the court, which this Hofburg Palace is huge. It's all 2,500 rooms. It was actually the winter residence of the Habsburgs. It's also home to the Spanish Riding School, which we'll talk about in a minute. But one interesting thing that you can do here, if you love the history of dance, then you will want to explore maybe doing the um, optional excursion, which allows you to learn about the Viennese waltz and how guests learn to um, do the waltz, how it actually was started by the one of the military campaigns when they came back and he was looking for employment. He was trying to figure out what he would do. He asked if he could turn the basement into what used to be the stables into a dancing school and taught the, the Viennese waltz, which of course was very, very popular, even scandalous back in the day. And um, of course made his living through that means. And it still continues to this day. So if you would like to have that special experience, you can certainly do so. But when you're in Vienna, you certainly don't want to do anything uh, related to commercial coffees. You want to have the cafes, which are so famous here, very iconic and palatial and beautiful. These have been supplying the, the palaces for over 200 years. So you'll definitely want a chance to try the Viennese coffee, soccer tour, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's a wonderful option. Lipizzan Stallions, you definitely want to visit the Spanish Riding School if you're interested in anything related to horses. This was established back in 1729. It's actually the oldest of its kind in the whole world, and you will have a access to the the trainers. They're going to show you the courtyard and the tack room. You'll be able to learn that these horses are actually black when they're born and they actually don't turn white until they are about nine or 10 years old. So you'll have this experience, then get to go to a coffee house, experience the soccer tort as we were talking about. But if you're there at the right time of year, you may even be able to participate in one of the Spanish writing school performances at night, which is very, very popular. Speaking of optional excursions, you may want to do the Vienna Boys Choir if they're in town. It was back um, ever since 1498, and you will go to the residence and maybe get to hear a rehearsal, talk with the boys, meet the choir members, hear a little mini concert, and a unique experience that is uh, special to Viking. Uh, you can also do a visit to the Hotel Soccer, which is what we did 
This wonderful chocolate cake has an amazing history and it's actually often duplicated, um, actually often imitated but never duplicated, I should say. The story behind that is, I believe it was Prince Albert who had some special guests coming and came to his head baker and said he wanted something to uh, honor his guests and would he create something for him. Well, the head baker got sick and so the apprentice was charged with this um, incredible responsibility. And the prince said, do not disappoint me. And he did not, he created this chocolate confection which became the rage. It is chocolate cake with a little chocolate filling and then apricot mousse in between the layers. And of course you can have it in many different places but Hotel Soccer claims to be the place where that was originally created. Doug and I did that and it was a wonderful experience. We had, um, he had Cafe uh, Vienna. We had uh, soccer tort and apple strudel. I had some amazing soccer tea. And the interesting thing about that was there was a chandelier that went through the floor, through two stories. We were on the upper story. And so we sat there having this amazing refreshment, looking out at the horse-drawn carriages that were taking tourists around the city. And it's just one of those special memories from our trip in Vienna. I encourage you to do that as well. In the evening, you may want to do a Mozart and Strauss concert, which is incredible. You know, the classical music never stops in Vienna. Uh, this is an orchestra which does a neat combination of orchestral dance vocal pieces and uh, all the compositions from Mozart and Strauss. So it's a wonderful opportunity to kind of get a feel for the city. And of course, your motor coach ride back to the ship is uh, the opportunity to see Vienna at night. In Krems, we have a unique opportunity that Viking has for its guests, and that is Gottfried Abbey. It's a Benedictine Abbey that has been uh, a working monastery for more than 900 years. You will have an incredible view, um, a drive on your motor coach up to the top of this mountain where the Abbey is, and you'll see these amazing views of the Vakau Valley. You'll be able to tour the inside of it, which has incredible frescoes, and uh, they will meet you at your entrance with either apricot schnapps or nectar. It's wonderful. You can actually purchase that in the gift shop. And one thing to mention with Viking, you never have to worry about tucking things in your suitcase if you want to, or your handbag, if you're trying to bring something on board the ship. There's no corkage policy, so you don't have to worry about uh, bringing it. They encourage you to do that. They want you to try these local uh, vintages on your tours, and then they'll be happy to uncork that for you, and you can have it with dinner or uh, and in the afternoon. There's a refrigerator in your room as well, so wonderful way to be able to store that. You can see that we have these incredible views of the Vakau Valley, which is the UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, you'll have a wonderful afternoon of scenic cruising where your program director will talk about what you're seeing as you sail, some interesting tidbits of the area, and then usually the chef will come and do, or pastry chef will come and show you how to make apple strudel or have some special coffee. It's just a very relaxing day. One of our guests' absolute favorite things to do. All right, and now we're going to deviate a bit and take a option to talk about the next stop, which is Linz on the Danube Waltz, and Chesky Kremlov is one of my favorites. I have to say I had to take a picture of a postcard that I purchased here. So it is the most charming city. So I really encourage you to do this as an optional excursion. I will say the included tour is a tour of Linz, and you'll have a wonderful day of learning all about, uh, I believe, Mozart created the Linz Symphony there, and you'll learn a lot of history there. We ended up doing Chesky Kramlov, and when we came back, um, frankly, took a little rest on the way back because the journey was, uh, motor coach journey was a little bit over an hour, and then walked our way into the city of Linz and just really enjoyed a tour on our own. So we felt like we got to do both things. But you can just see the castles, the, the river. It is just such a wonderful city. Um, it actually has a bear moat that has been there since the 1700s. And of course, it was way back in the day of protecting the castle. But there is an old fashioned pharmacy, a monastery there. We saw an incredible museum that had all kinds of 
old handwork, whether it was tatting, the lace making that uh, you don't see much of anymore. They had some original um, binding handbound books. It was just very fascinating. Of course, you can purchase some things there as well. And that's on the upper part of the city. And we really enjoyed exploring that. And then walking down to the Renaissance Town Hall, we had a wonderful lunch, some delicious, um, unique um, fare that was, you know, special to the area. Sat right on, along the river to have our lunch. It was a beautiful day. And what I recommend is stop and talk to your guides. They know the local spots, the hidden gems that will really give you a unique perspective of the city and uh, some special flavors as well. I think that's an untapped option is your guides have lived there. They know the city so well, and they will show you those tucked away places that will really bring a lot of uh, extra memories to your journey. Our next day is a stop in Passau, and you have this lovely city with just happy colors, very uh, a beautiful city that is at the confluence of three rivers, the Inn, the Ilts, and the Danube, our tour is going to be in this section right here. And you see this little conical tower right here. When you realize that the uh, rivers converge, and of course, if you end up with high snow melts in the spring, it can be susceptible to flooding. And back, I believe it was 2013, maybe it was 2015, they had the highest flooding in 500 years. And that the water level came up to about a foot below that conical tower there. And as you walk uh, through the city, the guide will tell you how there are markers along the walls that they will repaint as the flood waters come in. And that was her way, she said, of mother nature forcing them to clean out their basements. This is a charming city with some incredible views. I will say that if you have the time to go across the, the um, bridge here, you can take a little um, shuttle. It's about two euros. It was in the center of town. Take it across the street up into the hill for these type of views. It's the Vesta Overhouse is uh, the castle that's up there. And uh, there's also a museum that you can see. But of course, it is uh, great views, a wonderful way to spend a sunny afternoon and encourage you to do that. Of course, the other thing is <coughs> just seeing the beautiful city itself. Passau is a very bright and colorful city, very famous for its cathedral. The St. Stephen's Cathedral, which you see here, has over 17,000 pipes. It's one of the largest cathedral pipe organs in the world. And if you can, you want to try to get a concert while you're there. There's a 14th century city hall that you can see. And we just enjoyed wandering around and doing some shopping here. But a great option to do is and take some optional excursions. This is the launch point for visiting the city of Salzburg, which is, of course, the home for the Sound of Music on Mozart. Very picturesque. Um, you can hike the Passau Hills, which I just talked about. And of course, there's um, some a full day here. Don't snooze on your journey here. You will enjoy some incredible scenery. So take advantage of Salzburg on your day at Passau. And now we're going to jump back to the Romantic Danube because you will overnight in Passau and finish your cruise here if you're on the Danube Waltz. But then we're going to go to Regensburg if you are on the Romantic Danube. And of course, Regensburg has a lot of history. It is one of the best preserved medieval cities, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, literally untouched by the bombing of World War II, which makes it so historic. There is a great grouping of 13 to 14th century houses, and uh, the spires are beautiful here. This is a uh, very popular for this 12th century stone bridge. And of course, to the left of that, you've got to try the sausages and the bratwurst from the old sausage kitchen or the Alta Vescaccia, which is a, the continuously operating restaurant since the 1130s. So imagine being able to do something that actually their restaurant backs up to the city walls and you will have a chance to experience this bit of history, some amazing German sausages and enjoy sitting on the pier and just enjoying the, um, the town and the passersby. Do some people watching as you do that. 
Regensburg is also very popular as a Christmas market. So if you enjoy, I think Christmas markets are a wonderful option. It's like two cruises in one. And I will actually have clients that will kind of give this to each other every other year and they'll do the various Christmas markets because we don't need more stuff. And having memories together is what is so magical. The great thing about Christmas markets, it's kind of like getting two cruises in one because the towns in Europe do get dark early. So you get your included tours, which you would do anyway. And then the lights come on in the after, late afternoons. And it is so much fun to see how the local townspeople enjoy the holidays. It is nothing like the way we experience it here in America. And I just had such a great time. Street food, all the fun little things. It's a great way to go do your Christmas shopping and pack light on the way over and then bring Christmas presents on the way back and you don't have to worry about any of the Christmas fresh. Feltenberg Abbey and Danube Narrows is a very popular excursion. I would encourage you to do that. You go through a mountain pass. It's a really scenic bend in Germany and it's the oldest, one of the oldest monasteries in Germany. It has a brewery that's founded back in 1050 and they've been brewing ever since. So you'll get a chance to enjoy some scenic cruising, a tour of the Abbey, some uh, local brew if you choose. And uh, this was a real favorite of one of my clients who did this as an optional excursion. Now for optional excursions, you can also do an extension into Nuremberg. We do have this, of course, the old, one of the oldest cities and very badly destroyed during the war, as you can see here, but it has been fully restored to its medieval uh, status. And you can tour that, whether you do the medieval side or do the history side. This is a lot of times where couples will split up and do each do a different aspect of this city. But you can do a full day tour, which will allow you to learn about the documentation center and all about World War II history. If you enjoyed the movie, The Monuments Men, there's a tour that will show you how we um, were able to preserve the works of art by those art artists who um, actually became military, became joined the military to preserve these works of art and how they actually saved it. Um, so many pieces and you'll learn a lot about that history there as an optional excursion. And of course, this is another great Christmas market, one of the oldest in the world, known for its toy making for uh, nutcrackers and toy trains. So that's a great option as well. And of course, speaking of options, we have the Budapest uh, for two nights, which we have two different options there. We can stay at a premium hotel or the um, one. Both of them are great four and five star hotels overlook the beautiful River, Danube River, and be able to see some incredible views at night. We talked about Prague for three nights, which will give you, um, including your, your motor coach tour to the city, a tour of the city, daily breakfast, and your hotel stays. We have Nuremberg. If you just want to extend your stay in Nuremberg for two nights, we'll do that. And then a combination Nuremberg and Prague for four nights. I always recommend go ahead and put the extensions on your reservation, because if you do that, you'll be able to uh, take it off at final payment, but it is so much harder to find those cancellations because we don't have enough for everybody on the ship. And of course, we want to make sure you're flying all the way over there. Make sure you get the most possible out of your tour. Remember, you're always going to get the best deals through us because all we do is Viking. So we're always in the know of what those specials are you'll get a, a team of people that are actually going to watch over your reservation. So there are seven of us and all we do is Viking. So we're going to make sure we have every aspect of your cruise covered. And then if you do need to call us, you have our direct number. We answer the phone, we answer our emails and you don't have to get an uh, 800 number where you have a lot of prompts that you have to go through first. And if you book your cruise within two weeks of the seminar, you're going to get an extra $200 ship or credit, 100 per person. And that is even including if you book direct with Viking in the last 60 days. So don't hesitate to reach out and we'll be happy to help. Viking pays us to help you. Our services are free. Our goal is that you have such a great vacation that you come back again and again. And uh, Viking is great about creating that loyalty for our guests. And we try to do the same thing where we help you to the extent that you're like, I can't imagine 
booking, booking a Viking cruise without Imagine going there, travel helping. So if you've never done a river cruise, we're going to talk quickly about what makes a river cruise special. And one of the reasons is it is relaxing and comfortable. Your hotel floats with you. It's a great alternative to those land tours. There's no packing and unpacking, but you're still having some great scenery as you go. Every river is unique, so you have constantly changing scenery. And of course, doc the docks are close to the city and Viking owns most of the docking locations in Europe. So there you are right there in the heart of the city. Now, I will say in Passau, for instance, when we arrived there, there were already two Viking ships there. And so we docked a little bit further down and Viking had a shuttle that left every hour to take us to Passau. So sometimes with all of Viking's ships, you are gonna have um, occasionally that situation, but we have access to the best spots to access these towns, make it easy to get on and off the ship. With Viking, we have inclusive pricing and reduced airfare, so it makes it a great value. We've got a shore excursion every port of call. We've got knowledgeable guides, and we've got extended times in each destination, which is amazing. Our wine, beer, and soft drinks come with your meals. Uh, if you want specialty drinks like cocktails, you can purchase those by the glass, or we do have a very economical beverage package, which includes tips. We have specialty teas and coffees that are available 24 seven, and we have free Wi-Fi, so you're not nickel and dimed as you travel. Tips to picking the best time of year to travel. Most popular is always gonna be May and September. A real easy way to tell is that's when the prices tend to go up more in popularity, the weather's more mild. If you want to pick the least expensive, then you're gonna have some trade-offs. You're gonna do the mid-March, the first week of April, late October to mid-November, you're gonna have cooler temperatures, the shoulder seasons. But then again, you have a lot of savings as well. Remember, it's gonna be darker earlier in Europe and when you're traveling in those earlier or late times of the year, but especially if you're in Christmas markets, that is a great value. Now, you can save a little bit of money by choosing the last day in last week or so in April or the last week or so in August. Usually that's a little trick where you can shoulder that or you can choose the um, first week in October, for instance, that is another way to save. We talked about the growing popularity of Christmas markets and it is like two cruises in one. But in general, when you're traveling in cooler seasons, remember wear lots of layers, much better uh, to have a lot of layers that you can take off and put in your backpack, switch out as you warm up. You know, you are getting a lot of exercise. You're close to the ship so you can change out. But when you wear those heavy parkas or heavy, heavy sweaters, we go in and out of museums and it's really hard to regulate your temperature. So I want to encourage you to not overdo that. Now, just to do a quick overview of what the stateroom categories are, we're going to do that. This is an uh, overview of the longship. And I like to say it's a really simple way to think about the room categories. The verandas are on this side of the ship, the starboard side. And these mean you can step out, have your cup of coffee or tea in the morning, enjoy some scenic sailing as you cruise in. And the only difference between this is the A and the B, and that is just the deck level. They're exactly the same size. On the opposite side of the ship are the French balconies, and that's where you have the sliding glass door. You can lean out, but not step out, but that does allow you to have a good price point. That is category C and D. And then our big best value is the E and F, Standard state rooms, a lot of times when there's a sale, these are the ones that are available. It's a high fixed window, which I'll show you in a moment. I'm 5'7", and it comes about to my chin, and you can um, still see out, but of course you can't open the window. We have two Explorer Suites on the back, which I'll show you. You've got those 270 degree views, and then we have seven veranda suites, and those are on the other side as well, but it's kind of a combination of a French balcony and a balcony. Only 190 guests, as you can see, patented design with that Aquavit Terrace, the sun deck up there on the top, a walking track, an herb garden, and um, the putting green in case you want to get some extra exercise. This is the standard stateroom. It's 150 square feet. Uh, the difference here is that high fixed window and the French balcony, as you'll see, it's 135 square feet. I believe the difference is really just that square footage around the window, which they're uh, very efficient. There's plenty of space to 
store your suitcases under the bed, for instance. But if you want a little more space, you'll want the veranda stateroom. You see we have a chair on the inside, and then we have this lovely balcony, which a uh, little table, which allows you to enjoy some scenic cruising and a space to go. And for instance, I wake up earlier than my husband, so it's nice to go outside and not feel like I'm disturbing him. The veranda suite is two full rooms and you have this door that closes between. You have the French balcony there and the step out balcony here. It comes with some extras such as um, Air Plus service and the alcohol is in your refrigerator, some extras, amenities as well uh, that make you feel uh, special in addition to the extra square footage. This is the veranda suite bathroom, but all the bathrooms have heated floors, which is especially nice if you're doing those Christmas markets and great amenities that are large size that have the um, large print. So you never have to wonder what you're putting on your body and um, very efficient staterooms. Of course, we have the Explorer Suite, which I showed you has that 270 degree balcony. We have the two rooms here, so you're able to have lots of space. It comes with extras such as private transfers, the Silver Spirits beverage package, Air Plus service, of course, alcohol uh, is available in your room. And of course, lots of space, even in the bathroom, you have a two-way glass, so you never miss any important scenery as you're sailing. What insiders know about river cruising that most people don't? Well, we have some specials. For instance, we've got a free airfare for some 2023 river cruises, such as the Grand European, um, the capitals of Eastern Europe, which is an amazing itinerary. We've got some additional specials, such as July 4th, which will give you some extra bonuses. Of course, if you're viewing this um, webinar outside of this, every month has new promotions. So of course, I'll be happy to share those with you, but we'll always give you the best deal. We're gonna help you make this trip really special because we want you to have these great memories for yourself. We had a client that came back and said, the staff, the excursions, the food, I just wanted to hug everyone before we left. And another client that said, what you told us was true times 10. What makes us different? Well, our focus is Viking and we've got those insider connections and deals that we're gonna be able to pass on to you. Plus we can always give you those bonuses. Our services are free. Even if you book direct in the last 60 days, we can help. Give you that extra 100 per person and ship board credit if you book a trip within the next 14 days. And our motto is great vacations matter because great memories matter the most. I hope you've enjoyed this overview. We're so happy to help answer any questions you have related to Viking. We're always gonna give you the up to the minute sales, promotions, help you with those extra bonuses. Just wanna make your vacation as amazing as possible. We realize you are trading a big part of your life for an experience that you want to have memories that will last a lifetime. And of course, we wanna make sure whatever you choose is the best fit for you. I'm Carol Shaddix, and of course, my contact information is on the screen. Please feel free to reach out, and we'll be happy to help plan your next vacation. Hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.